everyone. Welcome. My name is Baron. I'm a demon summoning witch. Just kidding. I'm the book Baron. <laughs> Welcome in. Uh, just your local witch here for all your demon summoning needs. Not really, but I mean, this outfit really is doing something, huh? I love spooky season, so I'm leaning in pretty hard to it. I mean, come on, it's hard not to with purple hair. Today we're doing my October TBR, which I'm very scared about, and I do not want to be held accountable for because I have created this TBR, deleted it entirely, completely remade it, deleted it again, made a new one comprised of some books from the previous one and some new ones that I found and I keep finding new ones. <laughs> It's not stressing me out at all. I have like a list of books that I really want to get to. And then I have like an equally long list of on deck books that I'm going to list out for you of books that I still want to get to because we have new releases. There's so many spooky books that I want to get to. There's so many that I've been saving for this time of year, which I think was kind of a mistake on my part. We'll see what this month turns out like. I'm very nervous. That's enough rambling. Let's get into things. Carry over from last month. I do have Anointed by Charity B. I didn't get to that. I was very excited for it. I am about 60% into it right now and I am obsessed with it. This is feeling real good. This is feeling like maybe it's going to be a god tier book. Still got about half the book left so it could really go downhill but you don't care about that. What's this book about for anyone who doesn't know? This is a KU standalone. It is about a cult and it's kind of like coded as some version of FLDS. It's involving polygamy. They have like a compound. It's about Laurel Ann and Zeb. They have been best friends since they were children. In their like early teen years, Laurel Ann ends up doing a couple things that get her kicked out, but she is still a firm believer in the cult's belief system. So she still tries to uphold the spiritual law while she's on the outside. So she's been living on the outside for many, many years, but she has granted the opportunity to come back. And now she's the temptress for the prophet. I'm, I'm having such a good time with it. The cult does a lot of stuff that's really kind of dark. Just a heads up with this book and everything I read. I mean, look at me. Look at this face. This is a face that reads trigger warning heavy books. Let's move along before I ramble. <laughs> Tried to get to a Freitas Moon book last month. To be honest, the one that interested me more is actually the second book. So I'm going to put that one on here instead. This is the second book in a series. It's on KU. It's part of the Gideon Testament series that Freitas Moon is putting out. It's enemies to lovers. It's got some necromancy, forced proximity, paranormal. There's a little bit of a heist element, it sounds like. Basically, Taylor finds a corpse that has some power kind of like resonating in it still. And she's like, ooh, I need to look into this and investigate it. So she decides to bring this body back from the dead. And she's doing that with the help of one of the goddesses. Unfortunately, the person, the owner of that body isn't stoked about being brought back. And his name is Lincoln. He's just like, why'd you raise me from the dead? I'm actually kind of big mad. So despite this strained relationship, they need to work together in order to infiltrate a local neo church that has sprung up in order to get a mysterious relic. It's a little bit vague. I can't totally tell what the ultimate goal of getting this relic is. The cover is really cool and necromancy just sounds kind of fun. Ooh, that sounds creepy to say, but you know what I'm, you know what I'm saying, right? It's witchy season. Come on. Next up, I have a book called The Lazarus by Marlo Locker. I hope I'm saying that correctly. This is on KU. It's the first in a series. It's supposed to be like a dark urban paranormal sort of superhero, super villain feeling. It, like when I read the synopsis, it gave me like DC comics or like Marvel vibes. And at this point, I start utterly botching this description. So I'm gonna do a voiceover and you can stare at my lovely, lovely face. I mean, seriously, my skin looks so good that day. What did I do? Anyway, we have June, she's a cop and she works in Vernum City, which is a very rich city, but also very high crime. The cops are super corrupt. So during her time as a police officer, she ends up running into Caden, who is our super villain. And he ends up picking off people around her one by one in hopes of driving her into his arms. So I just thought that sounded really interesting and I thought it would be like kind of a fun take on paranormal. Next up, I have a book from my bookish FOMO video. I'm gonna really try, I'm gonna really try to get to reading Carrie Lake. Specifically, I wanna get to a Noctacadia, Noctacadia, something like that. It's a KU standalone. Yeah, obviously Carrie Lake is a new to me author. She's someone I've wanted to read for some time but just haven't gotten around to. So I'm hoping that this is the month. The premise of this is that Lila lost her mother a few years ago to this 
mysterious illness. She decides that she's going to try and find the cure for it. A couple years later, she's able to attend college and she decides to go to Circadia University. It's this old prestigious university that happens to be on a very haunted island. And this is where she meets a professor who goes by the name of Dr. Depp, enigmatic pathologist that she has to take courses from. It sounds like the relationship that they end up developing is quite toxic. So I was like, sign me up. I'm really hoping to get to that one. It's a bit of a chunker, so I'm a little scared, but if a book's good, who cares how long it is? Next up, I have The Monster of Hotel Number 7 by KV Rose. So KV Rose is an author that I've wanted to get to for a while. I have several of her books on my kind of like big TBR, but for this month, this just sounded really interesting. It just has like a, a little bit of a different vibe because there's a lab involved in this and we're not talking like science projects. I think we're talking more like Frankenstein stuff. So this is a book that's on KU. This is Childhood Friends to Lovers, Secret Society. We've got some occult and our female main character's name is Karia. Korea? I don't know how to pronounce it. She is obsessed with her friend Sullen, who is the son of one of the leaders. But Daddy Dearest has been experimenting on his young son. It's causing a lot of scarring, a lot of bruises and stitches, and eventually he ends up disappearing from her life entirely. Just when she seems to have given up hope that she's ever going to see him again, he pops back up and drags her to his lab. I don't know what that means, but I want to. What are we doing down there? I just, I need to know. I need to know what the lab's about. It's giving me Frankenstein vibes for some reason. Next up is another book from my bookish FOMO video. So I'll try and be kind of brief. Wicked Little Sins, it's by A.R. Breck. It's a KU standalone. Tropes here are like dark, stepbrother. There's some paranormal things going on. Very briefly, since I've already kind of talked about it in that video, we have Vera. She's being moved from Argo to up along the North Shore of Lake Superior to this creepy, spooky town. Like it's giving vibes of like, once you get in, you never get out. She's being forced into this new life. And unfortunately, this new life in Minnesota comes with a stepbrother named Malik. He is bullying her left, right, and center. And while all this is going on, she's dabbling in some like witchy stuff. I thought that sounded like it could be very interesting. I was just up on the North Shore very recently. So I have the location in my head already. So I'm like ready to dive in and, and get like a stepbrother romance, but also get witchy vibes. Next up, I have Black Sunshine by Karina Halley. I'm hoping that this is the first book that I'll be able to read in full from her. I have this book on my list because Nikki and Bookland and Ohe McKay have their Out of Bounds book club together. This is going to be the book for next month. So I was like, I want to participate. I want to be in on the fun. This is on KU. It's a duet and it's paranormal vampires and like a dark romance combined. We have Lenore. She was raised by vampire hunters. Little Miss Smarty Pants made it into Berkeley. She's in her second year now. She's turning 21. And on her 21st birthday, she is kidnapped by this broody stranger who has a lethal touch. Well, that's what the synopsis says. And I just like, hello, Juliet from Shatter Me. All right. But he isn't just any criminal. He is an old ass vampire, as these vampires usually are. And he's caught in a dilemma. Does he kill her or does he keep her for himself? I'm ready for some vampire loving. I'm actually going to Forks this month. So I'm like, give me the Twilight energy. After this, I just kind of have like a rapid fire round of upcoming releases that I'm hoping to get to and other books that have been on my TBR for a long time. I just want to go through them quickly because I'm not as confident that I'm going to get to any of these. The ones that I've already listed are like my top priority. These are like slightly less priority. Also from Karina Halley, I'm really hoping to get to at least the first book in the Hollow duet that she just released. It's gothic. It's like a retelling of the Headless Horseman slash like Sleepy Hollow. I love Sleepy Hollow. I mean, hello Johnny Depp. I've heard that this is either MFM or MMF. I can't remember. So let's see if I can double up on the Karina Halley goodness. <laughs> next month. For books that have been on my TBR forever, I've got The Kana by Runix. I don't believe it's on KU any longer, but it was at one point. It's a dark academia student teacher romance I've been meaning to get to for multiple years and I keep putting it off because I don't read it and then I push it to next year. I also have Her Soul to Take by my Lord and Savior, Madam Harley LaRue. I have been meaning to get to this series, but once again, I keep pushing it off because I think I'm going to really like it. And so then I want to save it. We're not going to save it. We're going to try and get to it. Oh, actually I own a copy. Hold on. I purchased a physical copy. I'm hoping this will push me to finally get to it this year. But this is first in the series of three. She just finished it. The last book, The Soul of a Witch, just came out like in the past couple of months. My understanding is that there's like a ghost hunter YouTuber type person that ends up summoning a demon and they fall in love with the demon. I think the demon is supposed to kill her. I don't really want to know that 
that much to be honest because it's Harley LaRue and I end up loving everything she writes. I'll read it regardless. Next I have Shattered Hearts by Shay Ruby. It's the first in a series of three books. It is a very toxic relationship. The description of this relationship literally says they are so addicted to each other, so obsessed with each other that the relationship detonates and there are catastrophic consequences. And I think it's dealing with addiction. So very intense. And look at that cover. That cover is gorgeous. I've been meaning to get to this book for six months. So it's time to try and get to it. Now in the category of new releases, I have two that I'm really hoping to get to and a third maybe. The first one is Hopeless by Elsie Silver. This is going to be the fifth book I believe in the Chestnut Spring series. It's small town and I think this one's gonna have a lot of mental health rep because Bo, it sounds like from the previous books, has maybe some PTSD from war. A book about fake dating, fake fiancéing, and I think that the female main character is the bartender that's kind of been lurking around from that like weirdo family that they live next to that they don't get along with. I don't really need to know that much. I'll read it regardless. So that book is really releasing on the 13th. Also releasing on the 13th, Grimstone by Sophie Lark. Somehow this was completely not my radar and it just popped up and now I'm like thrown off. It sounds like there's a gal that's kind of like down on her luck, like fiance left her, she's having issues with family, ends up inheriting a house that's maybe haunted, question mark. And then her neighbor is this like hot doctor man who ends up blackmailing her for something, something like that. It's Sophie Lark, I don't really need to know that much. This cover's really interesting, it's very different. That kind of like also made me curious. Finally, Candy Steiner is releasing the second book in her hockey series. I didn't write down the name of this book for some reason. I think it's called like Watch Your Mouth, which I think is probably why I didn't write it down. I don't really like that title. It gives me ick. It's the second book in her hockey series. Wasn't super impressed with the first one, but I've loved a lot of her other books. So I'm willing to give it another go and see if I can love this series. With all that, I'm super out of breath because I've been trying to rapid fire to get through these and per usual, I can't help but ramble. Let me know what's on your October TBR. I'm sure you guys will list something that I'll want to read and end up ditching something on my TBR for. It's fine. I'm fine. Everyone's fine. <laughs> no one's having a meltdown at all. Thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to like this video if you like it. Subscribe if you want more content from me. And I hope I see you on my next video. Bye-bye.